Hello everyone. So today we're going to be talking about a character who's large and in charge, and he, in our opinion, is one of the most craziest looking characters in Marvel Comics. And of course, we're talking about Mojo. Now Mojo is a super villain that's usually fighting against the X-Men and is published out of Marvel Comics and first appeared in Longshot number 3 of November 1985. Now to start off, most of the people that would come to be called the Mojoverse were slowly driven insane by some sort of wave of energy from another space-time continuum. Now, it would take them literally centuries in their time for them to discover the origin of these transmissions. Now, because of this, Mojo's race did not evolve much because of their inability to stand upright until a scientist named Arise developed exoskeletons that would allow them a fast technological revolution. Now, some of the members of the race just refused to use them and called themselves the Spineless Ones. Now, instead, they used motorized platforms to transport their bodies anywhere they wanted to go. They also became the rulers and demanded a race of slaves to do all their biddings and tasks that they would not or could not do. Now, A-Rays created the slaves, which were humanoid beings using genetic engineering and basing their appearance on the, quote, demons of the Spineless One's actual nightmares, which were actually the characters of TV broadcasts of Earth-616, but somehow were scattered throughout their timeline and perceived by the Spineless Ones. Now, unknown to the Spineless Ones, A-Ray secretly planted the seeds of their genetic makeup to eventually turn on their masters and rule Mojo World fair and justly. A-Ray was banished by the Spineless Ones as he refused to build weapons for them. The power structure of this world was based on the television industry and Mojo became their leader simply by controlling all of it, along with the slave trade. Now, Mojo named the world after himself, calling it Mojo World, and the dimension the Mojo Verse. His followers included war wolves, which were kind of dog like mechanical beings with the ability to straight up unalive people and take over the remains of their bodies as skins. Now, Mojo also has a Chamberlain, an android named Major Domo, who oversees Mojo's financial records and relays Mojo's commands to all of his servants. Now, Major Domo is completely loyal to Mojo, but does often obey with a sarcastic comment towards him. Now, one of the slaves Mojo had ordered, Longshot which is a character who was created through genetic engineering by A-Rise himself. He's got hollow bones, three fingers, and an opposable thumb on each hand. But his primary characteristic is that he is able to use luck on his side, kind of like Domino. Longshot becomes one of his best stunt performers. However, Longshot does disagree with the rules and leads a rebellion, after this, he's captured and has his memories completely removed, but managed to escape to Earth, followed by bounty hunters that Mojo sent to get him. Now on Earth, Longshot finds allies in the form of Doctor Strange and the human stunt woman Rita Ricochet, and they manage to defeat Mojo, driving him back to his own world. Now Longshot and his friend Cork and Rita return to the Mojoverse to free their fellow slaves. Now, Longshot's mission failed, and they were all completely captured by Mojo. Now, Longshot is brainwashed once again, while Rita is tied to the bow of Mojo's world-traveling ship, serving as a guide. Now, Mojo becomes interested in Earth and captured and brainwashed the blinded Betsy Braddock, renaming her the Psylocke. Much later, it was learned that the bionic eyes Mojo gave her were in fact interdimensional cameras allowing Mojo to record and broadcast all that she could see. Now, Psylocke was rescued by the New Mutants, and she aided both the New Mutants and the X-Men 
before officially becoming an X-Man herself. Shortly afterwards, Mojo sent Longshot to Earth, where he joined the X-Men as well. Mojo had planned on enslaving the X-Men by turning them into children, but the New Mutants managed to free them, and together they forced Mojo to flee. Mojo finds out that the adventures of the X-Men shot the audience level ratings to top level, which increased his political power as well. Mojo also manipulated the X-Men member Rachel Summers into working for him, but she soon escaped after realizing she was little more than a prisoner. Further setbacks began as Psylocke's broadcast stopped when X-Men were presumably unalived by the adversary. But Mojo wanted to have footage of the X-Men to improve his ratings, so one of his assistants came up with a possible solution. Create versions that could be controlled. Now many different versions of the X-Men appeared before him, but he considered them all to be complete failures and ordered their death except the X-Babies. The X-Babies were an immediate success, but they rebelled almost immediately and escaped taking Rita with them. Now later, Mojo reappears along with the alternate version of Jubilee. Mojo had kidnapped Jubilee, taking her to the, quote, Big Crunch, which is the end of time where all matter would collapse. Now Jubilee agrees to be Mojo's slave if he wouldn't interrupt the Crunch. Older and renamed Absissa, she kidnapped her younger self and took her to the Crunch. Wolverine appeared with a missile and defeated Mojo. Since Jubilee refused Mojo's order, Absissa's existence was nullified. Now eventually Longshot returns to free the slaves and disposed of Mojo. Now with the help of Mojo's upright, more human looking, although yellow clone, Mojo 2, the sequel. However, Mojo 2 turns out to be just as bad as his predecessor and Longshot had to defeat him as well. Now after Mojo 2 was ousted, Mojo, the first one, reclaims his position and becomes the leader of Mojo World once again. Now, Mojo never learned from his mistake concerning the ex-babies and would create more ex-babies, who also rebelled once again. Eventually, all of the X-Men had ex-baby counterparts on Mojo World, and they all rebelled against Mojo and fled to an area he could not reach. He also created the Mightly Vengers, not Avengers, Avengers, it's Vengers, which are child versions of the Avengers, of course, to finally stop the X-Babies once and for all. Of course, the Mightly Vengers, being essentially the same moral fabric as their adult counterparts, turn on Mojo and defeat him. Finally, he creates toddler versions of the Age of Apocalypse villains. Now, these entities were seemingly more intelligent and broke the control of Mojo, and according to Dazzler, these versions were responsible for the destruction of a great part of Mojo World. Mojo managed to defeat them and managed to once again take control of Mojo World. He then made a deal with the Exiles. In return for Longshot's help, Mojo receives broadcasts from all over the multiverse through the Exiles Crystal Palace. Prior to this, Mojo had tried to get his hands on Noctrine using the Exile Legal Eagles, clones of the Exile's previous lineup. Now later, Mojo reappears along with the previously vanished Noctrine and Juggernaut using a gene bomb to turn the X-Men into babies. And after his defeat, a guilt-ridden Juggernaut was tempted with the offer of remaining a child, but ultimately refused. Now Emma Frost made sure that Mojo would be handled by professionals so that he would never bother the X-Men again and was locked away by the government. But he is now free once again. Now during the Endangered Species storyline, Mojo was one of the villain's beasts offered to sell his soul to in order to help in reversing the effects of M-Day. Spiral later mentions to Beast that Mojo is displeased with the fact that mutants are now an endangered species and how it will affect his television ratings. In both 2010 and 2011, Mojo was revealed as the villain responsible for Spider-Man and Wolverine being sent randomly shifting through time. 
the time shifts usually being virtual creations generated by Mojo as a new idea. Now later, Mojo was demoted by the producers on Mojo World due to low ratings and was moved to educational broadcasting. He created an agency named the Yellow Eye and spied on every single mutant alive. When Cable sent Domino to spy on this agency, she ended up being captured and brainwashed by Mojo himself. Now his organization was eventually brought down by the X-Force and Domino breaks free from his control and he was revealed as the mastermind behind the entire agency. Now Mojo is currently a prisoner of Cable's X-Force team. A funny stat here, in the 2016 Howard the Duck run, Mojo was revealed to have used footage of Howard's adventure to create a reality show for the Mojoverse. To fill in the gaps in Howard's life, Mojo films footage of a small alien in a duck costume interacting with Leah Thompson, performing as Beverly Switzler, referencing the 1986 film adaptation of the character. Now as far as powers and abilities with Mojo is concerned, Mojo's multi-legged flying platform is armed with all kinds of various particle beam weapons and weaponry in general. It also has a large artificial appendage that can be used as an arm or a slicing weapon or two smaller arms. He is strong enough to hold a human off the ground with one arm quite easily. He has several powers derived from magic, like the projection of magical energy blast, controlling the minds of others, and interdimensional teleportation. These magical powers are strengthened by the, quote, worship of his followers, and hence directly linked to the popularity of his TV programs. He cannot be harmed by the touch of Rogue, no matter how long she's in contact with him. He has literally bear-hugged Rogue, with much ease until she was left unconscious. He's also a master manipulator and a schemer, shown in his organization as his slaughter entertainment games. He can also call upon vast manpower to assist him in all of his endeavors and has access to vast technological resources. Mojo is also a force of death and corruption able to generate anti-life fields that make his touch able to wither plants and even age humans outside of his home dimension. And according to Doctor Strange, his prolonged existence on Earth could even cause storms and other natural disasters, thus being considered a pretty powerful villain. We really think if there was ever a character that would symbolize what they actually do internally and how they think internally, this is exactly what they would physically look like. A overweight, angry person who has delusions of grandeur that hates everyone and everything. This is the funniest thing because it's kind of like some people on YouTube even. Anyway, you guys have a good night, a good morning, a good evening, whichever. Please like, share, and subscribe. We really do appreciate that. Also, leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think of this video, as well as let us know what kind of character maybe you would want to see on this channel, and we'll see if we can't make it happen. As always, Excelsior.